Just a few weeks back, Zack Snyder's Justice League debuted on HBO Max, and by virtually all accounts, it's a significant improvement over the theatrical cut. And that's raised the question, which other movies that had a troubled production deserve a director's cut? So today we're gonna look at the top five comic book movies that need a director's cut. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Share which comic book movies you would like to see a director's cut for. When I say director's cut, I mean there was a director that had a script that was approved by the studio, but somewhere in the production and post-production process, it was rewritten, reshot, re-edited, trimmed down to where what was released in theaters did not match what the director originally had approved from the studio. Studio. One more thing before we get started, I have a companion video to this over on my Patreon page with three more comic book movies that I would like to see a director's cut for. Also, this is a collaboration with my buddy Cody Leach who actually proposed that I do this video. Over on his channel, he's talking about five different horror or sci-fi films that he wants to see a director's cut for. That said, let's get started. In fifth place is Dark Phoenix. The final X-Men proper film in the Fox continuity and a film that most people felt was a very lackluster way to end the long running franchise. A big part of that was that the villains were totally generic and forgettable shape-shifting aliens and just in general it didn't feel like the movie came together properly and you could feel that the film was being tinkered with all throughout it and so the characterizations just kind of felt off. Well, as it turns out, the movie was dramatically changed during the process of making the film. There's conflicting reports as to exactly how much was changed and why exactly was it changed, but apparently originally they wanted the main villains to be the scroll. Well, the scroll were major part of Captain Marvel that was coming out from the MCU, and supposedly, depending on who you talk to, that led them to change Dark Phoenix to move away from them clearly being the scroll into these very generic aliens. Then beyond that, apparently, they reshot the entire third act of the film and dramatically changed it. It was going to be more personal, it was gonna tie into the politics a little bit more, Ty Sheridan indicated that they were gonna go to the UN to try and make a plea about an incoming alien invasion that was coming, only to reveal that they were scroll at the UN. There's all these ideas that were proposed, and then it was reshot and just kind of replaced with an action sequence. Though it was a cool action sequence, but it just lacked a certain amount of oomph to it. Cohesiveness that paid off in the third act or at any point at all. Other rumors say that they're just gonna more clearly kill off Jean Grey. And so all the changes just left the film that didn't feel like a single unified vision so much as a movie trying to find what worked. And so I would love to see what they were originally trying to do and does it kind of pull it together a little bit more and maybe not be as slam bang of a finale, but does it fit the story that they were telling better so it pays off emotionally? So I would be very interested to see that original version. In fourth place is Batman Forever. Whenever this movie first came out, it was actually received pretty well. It got decent reviews and made a lot of money. But its follow-up, Batman and Robin, is one of the most hated comic book movies of all time. And because of the connection between the two of them, Batman Forever isn't remembered as well as it was received when it first came out. But over the years, there's been many rumors, speculation that there's an extended cut of the film that's a darker film that explores the psychology of Batman even more so. And especially in light of the recent death of Joel Schumacher, more and more rumors and momentum has been growing to release this longer cut. According to some sources, there's potentially a 170 minute long cut of this film, which would be 50 minutes longer than the theatrical cut. Some of these sequences have been released on DVDs and Blu-rays, so it's like an alternate opening that kind of shows where Two-Face escaped, but most of what was cut was this whole subplot about Bruce Wayne not wanting to be Batman anymore and diving into his psychology. As you watch the version that's been released, you see pieces of that, but it's not really explained 
explored. It feels like it's cutting through a longer subplot that was removed. Apparently, there was Batman standing in front of a vision and a dream of this bat creature dealing with his own inner demons and just actually having a character arc rather than being a showcase for Jim Carrey as the Riddler, especially because this movie has a bit of a bad rap because of the Batman and Robin connections. It's a movie that I would like to see the more serious version of it. See that version that had a character study inside of it that kind of got trimmed away by the time it made it to the theater. In third place is The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Now this is a movie that had a ton of anticipation before its release because Sony was hyping up all the spin-offs they wanted to do coming out of this film. The trailers clearly showed they were sitting setting up a Sinister Six movie, and then upon release, fans didn't particularly care for it nearly as much as they were hoping to, and shortly after its release, it was announced that Spider-Man would be rebooted again and would be joining the MCU. But also shortly after its release, Andrew Garfield started being pretty open about the fact that he felt that this movie got ruined in the editing room. In one interview, he basically said that the script that he first read made him cry. And then in other interviews, he said this, I read a lot of reactions from people and I had to stop because I could feel I was getting away from how I actually felt about it. For me, I read the script that Alex and Bob wrote and I genuinely loved it. There was this thread running through it. I think what happened was through the pre-production, production and post-production, when you have something that works as a whole and then you start removing portions of it, because there was even more of it than it was in the final cut and everything was related. And then it continues on talking about the experience as opposed to how it was perceived. I got to work in deep scenes that you don't usually see in comic book movies. I got to explore this orphan boy, a lot of which was taken out in which we'd explored more. So from his perspective, they started with this cohesive script with this compelling character arc for Peter with a bunch of moving parts, but then they started snipping out all the connective tissue that tied the plot lines together so it felt clunky, disjointed, and like all the pieces don't fit together. And so what we saw was this jumbled mess of plot lines that didn't mesh quite right. The other big thing that's known about this movie is that they cast Shailene Woodley as MJ and Felicity Jones as Felicia Hardy or Black Cat, and almost all of that's removed from the film. And so you're just left with a movie that doesn't really resemble what they started out trying to make, even though all the main plot lines are there, they don't come together properly. And I'd love to see this jumbo extended cut with all the character moments put back together to see does it actually come together in the end. Real quick before I give you my top two, if you're enjoying this video and want more like it, remember there's a companion to this over on my Patreon page with three more comic book movies that I would love a director's cut for. And my good buddy Cody Leach is doing a similar video to this one where he's talking about five different horror or sci-fi films that he would love to see a director's cut for. The links are all over the place in the description right up here. You can check them out once this video is over. Our runner up is Josh Trank's Fantastic Four. This movie is infamous for being one of the worst and most incoherent comic book movies of all time, but it's also well known that there was a very troubled production related to it. Supposedly all throughout the scripting process there was competing visions as to what exactly they should go for. Eventually, they agreed on a script, but then right before production started, Fox made him trim the budget by like 30 million and cut out two different action sequences. So he had to rework his film right before they started filming. Then supposedly all throughout production, they were micromanaging him and he'd never worked on a big production before and his dogs tore up a house or something like that. Maybe he was showing up to set high or not showing up at all. All kinds of wild, crazy rumors surrounding what happened with this film. Then when they got the finished footage. They weren't crazy about what they were seeing, so they brought other people in to do reshoots, but Miles Teller wasn't available for the reshoots. Kate Mara had cut her hair, so she's wearing a terrible wig during big, gigantic segments of the film. And then, days before the movie was released, Josh Trank 
actually tweeted out that the movie that he made a year ago was awesome, but the movie that's about to come out does not represent his vision, essentially taking his own movie, throwing it under the bus along with the studio and burning every bridge that he has in Hollywood. So when the movie did come out, it got really bad reviews and plays like a jumbled mess. And the part where it gets really confusing is that the trailers are jam packed with footage that's not in the movie. There's all these behind the scenes shots of them filming sequences like with the Fantastic Four's car and other things that aren't in the movie whatsoever. And so you can just see there was this other film that he made that they changed it at the last minute. This makes you wonder, what was the movie that he was going to make? What if he could put in those two action sequences they made him cut and they added the footage that's in the trailer of the thing on missions back into the movie and he got to finish his production what would it be? It couldn't possibly be worse than what they put out. It couldn't possibly be more incoherent than what they said, because what they did is about as bad as it can get. And so I would love, love, love to have some version of the universe, which, of course, this would never happen because he burned all of his bridges. But if he actually was given some budget to finish his movie, finish his vision for it, what would that have been? I, I just so curious. But coming in in first place is David Ayer's Suicide Squad. As soon as this movie was released, reports started to come out about all the drama that went on behind the scenes. Supposedly, David Ayer only had six weeks to write the script for the film, and then reportedly, after the second trailer came out and people responded really nicely to the tone of the trailer, which featured classic rock music, they brought in the trailer company to re-edit the film to be more like the trailer. And so it was pretty clear that something went on behind the scenes. There was even a bunch of footage in the trailers, especially the first trailer, that wasn't in the final product. And the tone of the first trailer doesn't really match the film that we saw. And then last May, they announced Zack Snyder's Justice League was going to come out. And as soon as that happened, David Ayer became very vocal on Twitter about just how much his movie was taken away from him. And so for nearly a year now, he's been very regularly letting us know how much they changed the ending, how much they reworked the entire film, how they changed the score, how they reworked the tone, how they reused how the Joker was used. Virtually everything about the film was changed from his original version of the film. And even as recently as the last couple of weeks, he told Entertainment Weekly that he wanted to make kind of this darker character-based story. And then the executives, after seeing how successful Deadpool was, they wanted to convert it into this fun movie about anti-heroes and they tried to change it in post-production into something totally different from what he originally intended. Given the success of Zack Snyder's Justice League, this is the one that seems most obvious that like WB was clearly having second guessing themselves, undermining their directors and getting too involved during this window of time where this movie came out, where Justice League came out in which case he seems like an obvious person. Let us see what he was trying to do. Everything that he said about it makes it seem like it's a better version of the film that has more weight, substance to it, where the characters are developed better and has a better third act and finale. Like he's indicated that like the whole third act is totally different and the Joker was actually involved in it as opposed to just being the side character that just comes and goes but doesn't really affect much of what's going on. Would love to see what was it? What was he trying to do? What was it going to be like? So for me, it comes in at number one. If you want more content like this, remember I've got a companion video over on Patreon. The link is down below. Or you can check out Cody Leach's video where he talks about five different horror sci-fi films that we want to see a director's cut for. That video is right over there. Patreon link down below. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.